It all started when I was just a kid. I took some from my dad's stash and I was addicted after the first time. The third time I tried it, I ate so much that I threw up and I still went back for more. Over the next few years, my life totally fell apart. My friends, my family, they left. I lost my job. I would do anything for the next fix. I would buy it from kids, sell it to kids. I did some things that I'm not proud of. People will tell you that this stuff's not addictive. Trust me, they lie. Don't ruin your life like I did. It's the new craze that's been sweeping the nation at an alarming rate, costing millions of dollars to buy and produce. Some say it's more addictive than cocaine. Licorice. Will you be its next victim? So, Dr. Lown, can you tell us a little bit about licorice addiction? Uh, very sad. Uh, licorice addiction, um, or Big L, as it's known uh, on the street and in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, it's characterized by people having an obsessive need to eat licorice, have licorice on their person, uh, prioritize licorice in their lives. Some of them will draw licorice, uh, bed down with licorice. It's really quite a troubling uh, phenomenon. We, in our clinic, uh, we've been experimenting with some success um, treating uh, uh, licorice addicts, if you will. The, the, uh, in order to treat the problem, you have to first identify what it is. At first we thought that, you know, given the erotic twirling of the licorice stick, that perhaps there was a psychosexual component uh, to uh, licorice addiction. Uh, that didn't seem to be the case, so then we thought that perhaps, excuse me, then we considered the possibility that uh, it was related to uh, psychosexual in nature. Uh, then the other kind of licorice addict, oh my goodness. Sit down, young man. We need to have a talk. This isn't the first time we found these in your room. How do you think this reflects on our family? Son, you need to start thinking about your long-term health. Frankly, we're worried about you. Look how, look how much is a stress night your father. Well, you know, there's really two kinds of licorice addicts. There's the, the high functioning licorice addict who you may not even know they're there. You, you, they may be at your workplace. They're often found in movie lineups. Uh, in fact, we, we now believe that movie theaters are a hotbed of licorice addict activity. Um, but you might never realize that, that a high-functioning licorice addict is even a person who's addicted to licorice. Uh, meanwhile, there's other licorice addicts who tend to wallow like walruses or whales on the couch with licorice all around them, uh, stuffing their faces with uh, this sugary goodness that is licorice. Okay, uh, Mrs. Lemons. Oh, are we starting? Yeah, can you oh, tell sorry. us a little bit about your son? Okay, well, my son's name is Travis, and um, he used to be a really good boy, but uh, this is really embarrassing. He's a licorice addict. All he wants to do all day is eat licorice. Sometimes it's red licorice, but sometimes it's
This is Travis. He's been an addict for over 10 years. When we asked him for an interview, this is all he had to say. <laughs> Thankfully, his mother was much more talkative. Is this going to be on TV? Um, yes. <gasps> I like to tell all my friends. But Travis, Travis, yes, it's a real problem. I can't get him to do any chores in the house. He won't wash the dishes. He won't even clean up the licorice wrappers. It's terrible. I'm starting to worry about him. His health. He's kind of gaining weight. How's my hair? Um, I got highlights for this, you know. The uh, prospects for these people is, is uh, difficult. We have had some success in our clinic treating licorice addicts with a combination of alcohol and uh, drugs. And through the use of copious amounts of alcohol and drugs, we have, we have moved some people off of their licorice addiction onto other ways of thinking. Unfortunately, conventional minds with less imagination in the medical community with their peer-reviewed journals and, and ethics, you know, found cause to complain and, and uh, currently the clinic is under, you know, a light investigation. But I'm sure when we get our license back, we'll be able to again bring hope to licorice sufferers everywhere, I think through the use of drugs and alcohol. And ultimately our goal is to get, you know, these young people back to their normal lifestyle of obsessive pornography watching and uh, video gaming. Uh, you know, the natural pursuits of, of the young. Any other questions? Why is your office in a bathroom? 